In episode 18, Josh and Andy will share some highlights from a recent Galaxy's Edge trip, a possible plot line in The Mandalorian, what Force Ghosts can do and how that could affect Luke's role in episode 9, and we'll even throw in a collector's tip with a Star Wars Easter egg. The Force runs strong with this podcast. Pass on what you're about to learn. What's going on, Andy? Joshua, how are well, you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, Welcome into the Hall of Chronicles. We're Ooh. happy to have you. Woo, lasers. Pew, pew. No good out here anymore. Yeah, what is this? Episode 18? 18 we've done now. It's about time. I, th- I think I just talked like Yoda. <laughs> 18 have we done now. Done. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Here we are. Uh, you guys are listening to the Hollow Chronicles. You can find us at Hollow Chronicles on Twitter, at Hollow Chronicles on Instagram, and also at Hollow Chronicles on YouTube. Plus, we got some Facebook action. And as always, Hollow Chronicles on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever and all the other stupid places. We're good to go. We are good to go. Man, it's been quite a weekend, Josh. Oh, yeah. What happened to you this weekend, buddy? <laughs> uh, well, um, my son's baseball team lost every game they played. Well, that's fine. That was rough. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, that's not the most important part of your weekend. No. Uh, I, I, I traveled throughout the greater Portland area, and I visited six different targets. Yeah. And I didn't find a single retro figure. Whoa. Nary a one. Nary a one. I think they're gone. Really? I think they're gone. You think you're going to legitimize the claims that one and done for Father's Day on those retro figures? Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I went to six different. Yeah, that's pretty big. I mean, six different targets. And it took me a while. This isn't, they don't put targets right next to each other. Right. I think I think we may not see him again for a while. Oh. If, if we see him again. Now that all. being said, we did have a retro figure giveaway, which means we probably gave away a pretty big deal. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but you know what? You, hang on, hang on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do. You're gonna this dive right, right in. Yeah. All right. All right. Show me your collection. Nice. So, um, the collection. Just as a is a piggyback onto the giveaway that we did last week, and uh, true Green Arrow at true Green Arrow. Yeah, I think I think, that, that I think that's same. right. Yeah, um, his name's Matt because all we do is cater to guys. We love Matts. Mats. Matts are amazing. <laughs> um, he actually today got. I know that was got, so cool. Yeah, he got the 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 set arrived today, and he already had a Tarkin figure. And so he's got all seven now of the retro figures from Target, exclusively from Target. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we gave away something that maybe has a little bit of value, but it, oh, went, yeah. it went to the right guy, oh, man. Oh, it did. It, it went awesome. to the right guy. His son, you know, just he loves Star Wars, too. And, of course, he loves Star Wars. Uh, but his son does too, and and uh, he took a picture of his son playing with them, and and they're coming out of the package, guys. Those aren't which I love because I want I got to make sure that Matt or at Green Arrow whatever sends pictures of them out of the package because it'll be the first time I've seen them out of the package, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Yes, you haven't taken yours out of the package, and I love that his boy's playing with them. Yeah, perfect. Take them out of the damn package. Let your boy play with them. Do it together. Yeah, fantastic. Do a, do a father son thing with them. So that I found that to be very fulfilling. Yes, that we were able to do that for him, and his kid gets to play with them, and they get to do that together, and. For me, that whole thing was worth it, and I'm happy we were able to do that for you, Matt. Well, and thanks to everyone that listened and followed and, and shared. And, yeah, and retweeted. And, yep. yeah, you guys didn't. Not everybody could win, but I think it worked out. It did. In, in the big picture, it worked out. And uh, we'll we'll repost uh, what he sent us today, um, tomorrow. We'll put that up there, and it was, it was pretty cool. I, I don't know. Like I said, I got a lot of internal 
joy from that. Good. Um, Josh, we had a buddy just get married, and on his honeymoon, a fellow B and Beer, a fellow B and Beer, yeah, a local guy. His, his name is Keith. Uh, local guy that does some really cool stuff with Star Wars, by the way, and in that. And Marvel. And Marvel. Now, he's he could be considered primarily Marvel, like he's a Captain America guy, which is great. Yeah. However, what, two times now? Two times he's uh, sponsored, put on, spearheaded yes. the uh, rental of an entire theater for Star Wars releases, uh, Force oh, Awakens yeah. and Solo, right? Yeah, it was Force Awakens and Solo. We didn't get to Last Jedi because the timing between Solo and Last Jedi was so short. But yeah. Solo and Last uh, Force Awakens, and and all the proceeds went to a local charity or a couple of local charities. Couple, yeah, which is fantastic. So they'd bring kids in, you know, underprivileged kids, get free tickets, front row seats to the movie. Just fill it up. It was awesome. Uh, Andy and I provided some props for a few of those. Uh, we will provide more props. And Trevor. And Trevor. And yep. Trevor provided props. Yeah, Trevor provided... Uh, the Carbonite Solo. Carbonite, so- Carbonite Solo, which was fantastic. So, um, yeah, it, a good guy. Really good guy. And, like you said, recently married, and he chose his and, honeymoon spot. Go ahead. You say yours. Go. Well, I was going to say, by recent, we mean like a week ago. He got married. Like a, yeah, like last Friday. And has been on his honeymoon up until yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And he went. He and his bride went to Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, and which, got one of the reservations to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. So he went through it, shared uh, with Josh his the as best as he could in a short amount of yeah, time. Yeah, so we had boots on the ground, BMB boots on the ground, which is good. <laughs> yeah. And I got some feedback for you. So this will this will be considered our Star Wars news because sure. there wasn't a whole lot of I don't know, nothing earth shattering well, in the come last on, week. a visit to Galaxy's Edge. That's news pretty enough, right. That's pretty up there. Star Wars news. So a few of the details he gave me. Which I didn't know, and this is just me not being in the know, which is fine. And I'm sure some of you out there already knew this, but I didn't know that the resistance, what's that called? The, uh, I don't know it, the the name of the ride, the resistant ride at Disneyland. Smugglers Run? No, no, the other one. The uh, oh gosh, I just got to type it up on the computer. But um, anyway, that ride is not open yet, which I didn't know. I thought that they were opening Galaxy's Edge with. All everything ready to go. Just yeah, firing all pistons firing. Right, and so um, it wasn't opened yet, which is good. Uh, Rise of the Resistance. Duh. Okay. So uh, so that ride wasn't open. However, like you said, Smuggler's Run was, and from all accounts, you 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 take you take you know if you're going two people, there's six people that go in there. There's pilots, there's gunners, and there's engineers. Two, two, and two. <laughs> and each one has a special role throughout the the mission. And, of course, you know, Pilot is flying. And it's literally flying. He tells a funny story about his new bride. And she's got the steering wheel or whatever. And and he's like, turn, get behind the train. She's like, it's not. It's just doing its own thing. And he's like, no, it's not. And she's like, are we fighting <laughs> on their first trip? It's their first uh, fight. He's like, we will be fighting if you don't get behind that train. Like a perfect Han line, which is great, you know. Yeah. And so she steers it behind the train. And then there's grappling hooks, I guess, because you're trying to steal power cells. or so. It doesn't matter. The, the, yeah. the deal was is that the authenticity of the ride uh, was fantastic. I saw some videos of him walking down the hallway so it's it's interactive it's not just you sit and you get to no. you get taken on this no you have a crew and you get these little chips like uh you know credit looking cards and you match up your crew you like you form your crew and i don't know what that actually means i didn't dive too much into like well how does that look and and basically you just line up on on the colors with the numbers and it's pretty cool but uh, one of the things he said was he got some good tips because actually his day was Wednesday and they started their, their week at Disneyland on Monday. And so he was talking to people that had been through Galaxy's Edge already. And by the way, the rest of Disneyland, completely dead. He said the park was empty. 
Oh, so... So they just hit every ride like day one. The park was empty because, and this is a good reason, he said, well, because of the reservation system, people that didn't get reservations, not going to the park. And so the only people at the park were people that had reservations maybe tomorrow or the next day and were waiting for those like him. But that was it. It was all Star Wars people trying to see Galaxy's Edge. And so the park was dead. They were just rolling through every ride, which oh, that's, is fantastic. That's now, awesome. obviously not going to happen again. I mean, if you want, book some tickets right now, and I'm sure you get some empty parks. But he even talked to staff members in Disneyland, and they're like, we were prepped for some of the biggest days we've ever had. And we have had some of the slowest days we've ever had, which is <laughs> which is interesting. That's the power of Star Wars. Like, if it ain't going to be open, I ain't going to go. So yeah. So right now, book your tickets. Yeah. I mean, what do you got till June, the end of June, before that reservation system goes off? And I bet you could stroll through Disneyland unimpeded. Oh, that's. So uh, one of the things, though, one of the tips you learned through those two days before was, first thing you do is basically if you've heard of fast passes at Disneyland, they get you onto rides or passes in general. Was basically go and get your pass for the cantina. Because the cantina has like a maximum of 200 as like who they let in. And so once in the cantina, you have like 40 minutes. He said he watched people, 15 people behind him get turned away because they were maxed out. And then in the cantina, you can get your your blue milk. You can get your blue milk with alcohol. You can get all kinds of stuff. But <laughs> he said the attention to detail was phenomenal. So that, that seems to be a theme, uh, at least the people that I've... Heard from online that have been there, they they say there is nothing that they haven't thought of as far as when you're walking through the place, there isn't anything that doesn't belong. Like right. everything is down to the distress paint on a... I mean, just like every detail is thought of. And interactive. So he was nice enough to bring... Us at the Holocronicles back a holocron. Yay! Yay! It's right there. It makes crazy noises. Should I? I'll, I'll pump the noise here one time. It goes on forever. I don't know what else it does, but I think it interacts in the park, which here at home, it doesn't do much but this. See, anytime a Jedi should be talking to us. Ooh. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're good with that. Oh, it's going to shut down too. Um, so we brought us a holocron, but apparently those holocrons interact at like drinking fountains and different parts. If you if you take your holocron oh, close to it, yeah. it'll say something else. Plus... So if you and I ever go there, we need to take that with we us. We have to take that with us. Okay. It's prepaid. Okay. So, <laughs> and if you put a different kyber crystal inside, it'll do different things as well. So obviously they have multicolored kyber crystals. Which leads me to the next point, um, uh, which is they build, you can build your sabers there. Right. There's all kinds of, they have, um, they don't call them lightsabers though. They call them relics, which is interesting. Yeah. So he said even to the point of like, okay, 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 that the staff member there was very adamant about like, these aren't weapons, they're relics because, you know, Disney, we can't sell guns and swords and... So it's they're, they're relics. And he's like, all right, well, my relic light up and cut someone in half. You know, that's that's like, <laughs> which he didn't get a very good answer for that. But I thought that was kind of cool. Another key point, the food is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's according to Keith. According to Keith. But, I mean, come on. It's an alien planet. What are you going to expect? Your palate has to adjust. Yeah. I'm sure if he was there for longer, he might start like to like some of the things. We'll see. We'll see. Um, what did he say about the blue milk that it tasted? It was a, a mix of like coconut and rice. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> which is you know it's non dairy, right? Which we knew that already, right? Yeah. I mean, so no uh, maybe that suits your palate that didn't suit Keith's palate. I think that's where we're at. Look, none of it, good or bad, deters me from going there. I'm like, <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna try every bit of food. I'm gonna. He said they were a little, a little strict about how many like uh, the thermal detonator. Uh, Sprite, Coke, and Diet Cokes. There's only three, and it's limit three. You can't buy 20 Diet Cokes and Cokes. Yeah. So he was trying to buy enough for everyone, and and the, the the cast member, not the staff, but the cast member was like, I recognize you. 
<laughs> limit three. So we got a little bit of little bit of the imperial uh, situation there, but that's funny. That's all right. That's all right. Got to try. So food bad. Lightsaber, cantina good. Cantina good. Lightsaber building is fun. Is fun. He bought himself a uh, a Luke uh, uh, episode four. You know, original Luke's. Uh, hilt, no saber, but you can insert your own kybers. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. And he mm. said there were people just rolling around with boxes full of droids, boxes full of creatures. If you go into the creature shop, there's nothing but crumb on everyone's shoulder. I mean, it's, oh, it's the awesome. creature goes, shop looks fun. Stribs, it's crumb. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. All that does is make me want to go more, and it makes me think like, when is that going to happen for me? Now the final point. Is that he said it's definitely a work in progress, progress, especially with the resistance, rise of the resistance ride not even open. It will open in fall with probably the same time that Disney World opens theirs. And really, it's a litmus test, Disneyland, for their other opening. They're mm-hmm. like everything. So there's going to be mess ups. There's going to be hiccups. But he said there's a whole nother part of the land where you can't really get to it. Because it's all closed off. And stormtroopers are patrolling. So he said he watched a group of people go in kind of a back alley, which ended up being cast members. And he had two stormtroopers converge on him and have their canned phrase. was Nothing to say here. I mean, it was. It said it was fantastic. There's stormtroopers everywhere. Move along. Yeah, exactly. Move along. Exactly. So the only weird thing he said is that there's not... Because if you've ever been to Disneyland, it's all about the atmosphere. Yeah. Music makes atmosphere. Sure. They weren't playing Star Wars music, which to me, there was ambient noise like spaceships and and that kind of, but they weren't playing Star Wars music, which to me is like Like playing a little KLOS, a little classic rock and roll, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Yeah, no, they weren't even doing that. Okay. So too bad. uh, Yeah, too bad. Too bad. Uh, But so I think that, you know, obviously it's Disney. They're going to figure it out. They're going to make it work for the. For the fans, but on the whole, uh, you know, ten out of ten as far as the experience. So, so whenever, whenever, whenever we go there, it's going to be better. It's going to be better. I would not want to be one of the <laughs> losers that went there the first day. Yeah, oh, <laughs> worthless. What a joke! Well, you guys just got nothing but a friggin'. Some people really half-assed ups- attempt. <laughs> Some people really upset they didn't get to go, but pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> But, but not anyway, us. There you go. There's our boots on the ground. BMB. Thank boots you. on the ground. Thank you, Keith. OG thank you, BMB right thank there. Thank you for getting married. Yeah. That was a good. Congratulations. Good on you in, in a lot of different ways. And one of them being able to share a fun honeymoon <laughs> story with us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then we have ourselves a classic BMB Holocronicles favorite. Easter eggs. And Josh, when I was a kid, there was this thing called the Bugs Bunny Club. Are you familiar with this? <laughs> Not the club. Okay. Well, <laughs> the club? There was, it was put on by uh, the local law enforcement in, oh, then in, no. in Longview, Kelso. And uh, it was when I was in grade school. And, and what it did is it provided a Saturday morning activity for any kids that wanted to come. And it had to be like 12 and under. So, and what they would do is they'd at the old Kelso Theater, which is no longer, well, it does still exist, but they'd play a movie and, and it was supposed to be kid friendly and they'd have act, um, activities before and after the movie and it was put on by the, like I said, local law enforcement. Well, they played movies like Sinbad and Sails the Seven Seas and like Jason and the Argonauts and like these old movies, action right. movies. With awesome cl- claymation. claymation. Yeah. Awesome claymation. <laughs> They're pretty rare. Clash of the Titans. Exactly, exactly. Um, actually, Clash of the Titans has some boobies It was a little too risque <laughs> for the 12-year-olds. That's but, why I watched it when I was 12. <laughs> but the highlight was when they showed the movie Goonies. Oh. Like, the theater had never been so packed, <laughs> right? And, and for guys... Top-selling candy bar? <laughs> baby Ruth. <laughs> um for people of a certain age, aka our age, which would be you know early forties, uh, Goonies was a pretty big movie when we were kids. Right. Um, not only and not only that, but it was filmed in Oregon. Like it yeah. was, it was close to where we I've lived. Been to the Goonie house, I've driven by it. I've, yeah. Well, I haven't been in it, but I looked at it and and was 
shunned by the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> was it on your way to the kindergarten cop elementary school? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and the not to do and uh, and the bridge that uh, number five parachuted from. And yeah, I mean, circuit. Oregon is a mecca of Astoria. Great eighty movie. Astoria 80s movies. Yeah. is a yeah. Plus Free Willy and oh come on. I mean, so anyway, yeah. The, Little plug for the tourism of Astoria, Oregon, but um, but Goonies was awesome and and uh, it's still good. It holds up. Sure, it's a good it's a good little action adventure kid movie, and my kids have seen it and and liked it too. But there is a Star Wars Easter egg in it. And is I, there? I didn't know this until this week. I didn't know this till this week huh. when I was looking up what should what kind of Easter egg should I do for the pod this week? Sure. And, so I found this. There's a uh, when at the end of the movie when they are on the deck of the pirate ship. Spoiler right. alert: They get on the pirate ship. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. We should have put. Th- we'll put that in the notes, <laughs> and we'll edit it. Yeah. In post. Yeah. We'll we'll put a big spoiler alert. Goonies. But there's a quick scene, and and it's very tough to see. But there's an R two D two on the deck. Really? Yeah. And I I will post a picture of it on Twitter tomorrow. Um. Or today, whenever you happen to hear this, sure. Um, but it it looks wooden, so it doesn't like stand out like a white and chrome dome kind of, uh, you know, doesn't stand out from a pirate ship. It's a wooden R two D two, kind of behind some rigging and ropes and and stuff. But it's very distinctly an R two D two. It's just that your eyes wouldn't catch it unless you were looking for it specifically. Interesting. Yeah. So there's an R two D two. Um, Any facts on why? I mean, was a director a fan, or was it just the right time, the right era, put an R2-D2 on there? You know, I think there were a lot of fans of Star Wars, sure. and there still are. And that's one of those adventure movies that kind of falls in the same footsteps as Star Wars, like downtrodden kids about to lose their house. Yeah, they go on an go adventure. Go on a treasure hunt. Save the day. Save the day. Just like Luke. Just like Luke, yeah. And... uh and in in a way, kind of a kid version Indiana Jones ish. Totally. And so uh, maybe that was it. Yeah. Maybe that was the connection there. But um, but yeah, there was a little tip of the cap to Star Wars with a little R two D two. Good egg. Yeah, it's a good egg. I had I had never heard that before until um, this week. So and I thought awesome. I I thought I had seen quite a few Easter eggs in my day, but that was a new one for me. <laughs> so Josh, um, the last. The last thing here before we get to our main topics. Hello, what have we here? Galactor Tap! <laughs> so, uh, alluding to your comment at the beginning of the pod. Uh, How was your weekend? My weekend. Uh, my house got broken into this weekend. Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, not quite a yay moment, but... Um, it was It was totally bizarre. It was... The, the nutshell version is that... Uh, a a young woman who was high on methamphetamines. She didn't break into my house. She found an open slider door, which there was that was my fault. I left the slider downstairs uh, unlocked. That's how she got in. But we live way far away out of town. Yeah, I gotta say, like there is no other place. Uh, like th- 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 this isn't a suburbia. No, this, this isn't even a this cul-de-sac. Isn't, no, this isn't a neighborhood where all the houses kind of look alike. And uh, no, it's, it's not like that. This is the top of a mountain. I live on a mountain. A mountain <laughs> that his family has purchased the majority of, and then divvied out parcels to their family members. But even still, you're going up a, a nice forty five degree grade <laughs> to get that. Like this isn't your average. We get snow. In Washington, <laughs> where they don't get snow. Um, so yeah, it, it the randomness is what's so spooky about it. Yeah, is like how do they end up at our place of all places, you know? And so, anyway, the, the long and short of it is that she just came in and used. She made herself at home. She didn't take anything. She showered and used yeah. her toothbrush. It was weird. Kind of um, a Goldilocks thing going on there. Yeah, Matthew she, Locks. Uh, and Trevor is a, our, our buddy, the 5 one of the BMB originals. Uh, he's a policeman. Um, and he said that, as luck would have it, we found the nicest meth head 
in the county <laughs> uh, because that's not typically their behavior to just kind of settle in and and you know take Eat the care porridge. take care of themselves <laughs> and yeah fluff the pillows they rearranged their <laughs> closet and the bathroom and it was just the whole thing was just so weird and so naturally that thing you know once once I and I wasn't I was an hour away and at this baseball tournament and so I felt pretty helpless to the whole deal my wife was kind of shook up about it but once everything kind of got settled down, then it was like, well, I better go check the Star Wars room. Right. So I walked down there, and turns out uh, people's addicted to opioids. They're not interested in little plastic figures. They're just not. They're just not. Um, I so, can't believe a 24-year-old <laughs> female meth head wasn't interested in 1977 toys. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that, Josh. Well, I mean, all right. No, but it was it was just so weird, and uh, it, like like Trevor said, it's like you guys you guys really lucked out, and uh, uh, by getting the nicest. Uh, well, you uh, know, and that's why we're a positive pod. We were a positive right? pod, and you know, and I said, yeah, you know, we're just a, a rehab away from this being a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everything, everybody's safe, and it all worked out. It was kind of a spooky deal, and it was really weird. Um, but the collector tip today is lock your doors. <laughs> it's very practical. It's a collector tip in general. Yeah, I mean, just, if you just collect like family members. Yeah, if you have kids and or that a you TV. like. <laughs> lock your doors. Lock your doors. Uh, but you could extrapolate on that a little bit and be like, hey, you know, make sure for insurance purposes, which I've done, is from time to time, I'll just take pictures of my room. Just take pictures of what's on display so I can at any point reference and be like, yeah, you see that right there? Look that up on eBay. That's worth $150. You know, you wouldn't believe that that little figure mm-hmm. that looks like every other figure is worth 10 times more than any figure in the case. But he is. He's yeah. A, he's a good looking you, guy. Wait, you mean you don't know everything that you have? Yeah, but I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could make up a lot of stuff too for the for the adjuster. I'll tell you that much. Oh, But uh, photographic evidence sure does help. Yeah, that That is true. Uh, yeah, so the the very practical uh, collector tip today is very is lock your doors. And so, well, we're glad you're safe. We're glad your wife and kids are safe. I mean, that's a that's a scary deal. Yeah, but like I said, you should look. I know you have one, like that Sphero R two up there. Yeah, yeah, he'll go on a patrol mode, and he will he will just whistle it up if someone comes in. Yeah. Well, my dog was useless. Yeah. She well, what it, is she eight months old? No, six. Six months old. Yeah. He, he is six months he. old and she just cozied right up to him and they were she even commented they to were my meth wife. Friends. They were, were just meth friends. They're just meth friends. He's like, yeah. Oh, I love your dog. And, you know, that was like <laughs> oh, anyway. Lock your doors. Lock your doors. Uh that's so, a fun tip. And thanks for <laughs> thanks for sharing, Andy. I know that's a little insight into your weird weekend. Yeah. It there there's a lot more to it too. Like <laughs> I just Yeah, DM us and he'll oh, give you the full story. Man, it was nuts. <laughs> um but to follow up, Josh, have you gotten anything lately? Uh other than the Holocron from Keith? You know, that would be the highlight. The Holocron's pretty awesome, straight from Galaxy's Edge. Uh, I feel like it's been like, it's been, it's been in the make. Well, okay. Yeah. You're pointing out. All right. So I got a, uh, a, a skiff set, the one man skiff. And what would you call it? a tri label? You know, a tri logo, uh, tri logo in the box. One man sail skiff in the box. It looks pretty sweet. I got it from the UK and it's in a case. And that would be kind of my add on to a collector tip is if you're on Facebook, join collector groups, because what happens there is the community takes care of itself a little more than like eBay where they're trying to make top dollar as opposed to the community that's like, hey, I understand you guys are collectors, so you're looking at trades. You're looking at really good pricing with shipping from the UK. I think I got that thing. I think I got that below what I could ever find it on eBay. Yeah, and it's in a case. And it's in a case like probably a, worth uh, half of what I paid for it. Yeah. Like a acrylic case. Those acrylic cases can be spendy. They're about 20 bucks a pop. Yeah. 30, 20 to 30. Um, They're worth it. Totally worth it. But you don't always get cases And I got a little everything. glider, and I was kind of inspired a little bit by like, hey, let's grab some random stuff that I don't have, and there you go. So there you go. It's cool. Definitely you. cool. What'd you get? Uh, well, as I told you, I struck out at local targets, and... And for me at this point, uh, given how well the giveaway was, um, I'm looking for figures for people. Sure. Um, you know, we 
we, you know, we joked a, a pot or two ago about the scouring of the targets. Right. Or what do we the call fleecing. it? The fleecing. The fleecing of the targets. I was thinking the scouring of the Shire. Forgive me. Same thing. Um, and and we have been able to get some... We, we got figures for each other. We completed each other's kind of sets. You found some, and I found some, and another buddy of ours found some. And, and we kind of helped each other find um, a, a set for us to have. And then... Uh, well, that's where the idea kind of came from, is we came upon like, hey, we have an extra set. Yeah. So what do we want to do with that? So in our in our attempts to get you know get everybody in our within our just our small group uh, a set of those Trevor you me jo- uh, George um and then that kind of led to all right well we have enough now we've got an extra set let's give it away you know put some uh, good vibes out into the Twitter sphere and and give away a set that'll be fun and then uh, we got another set we we actually had enough for a couple sets and yep. like, you know got a set to one of our Twitter followers who actually lives pretty close to us, Chris. Shout out, Chris. Yo, yo. Um, and uh, and then uh, Rogue Squad Two, right? Yeah, Rogue Squad. Yeah, Rogue Squad Two. I always want to call him Rogue Two Squad, but that's just my backwards head. Doesn't matter. You'll find him. But anyway, so we're still out patrolling targets, or at least we were up until I'm done now. But yeah, you're spent. I, I'm a. I'm, I'm kind of over it now but we're trying to get them to other people and and that's that's for me like you said we not only do we enjoy getting stuff but we like getting the right things to the right people too um that's something that we just do and and it's we we like that kind of stuff because we want to share our love our passion for this stuff we want other people to have it too because then that gives us a common ground to you know, we, we'll have that in common from here on out now. Sure. And, uh, I've met Chris a couple times now through this, this podcast and through Twitter and everything. And, and now I feel like, you know, we've made a friend and we've made some friends on Twitter. And, and like, when I say friends, I mean, like, I'd go have a beer with you, you know, yeah. and we'd spend some time if we lived by each other kind of friends. So it's all good. It, but, um, it's why we did the pod. So it's good stuff. So I guess, on a on a Craigslist thing on a whim, um, I bought a an original uh, stuffed animal wicket. Yeah, you put that up on yeah. Twitter. I, I put a picture up on it, and they they made two. They made a wicket and they made a princess Nisa, um, and they're not super rare, uh, but I'll get the Nisa at some point. Sure, just to finish off the pair. But uh, yeah, my my daughter liked it. She thought it was cool, um, but yeah, it's been I've been striking out on eBay lately. Yeah, eBay's rough. It can and and some of it's my own fault. I just I just haven't been on on the ball as well as I should have been. I would have really 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 liked to say that I got like an Ewok battle wagon this week, but I was just a little lazy, a little tardy on the button. <laughs> Maybe another week. You're maybe the another opposite week. of lazy when it comes to collecting. Well, and once summer hits, I'll have a, a little bit of free time too. Watch your backs. <laughs> watch your wallets. Watch my. Andy's wallet. on the loose. Yeah. Oh, he'll don't trade, tell me he'll if you trade need, you out of out of your socks. Don't tell me if you need anything because I will find it, and then we're gonna have to talk. There it is. Okay, so main ideas, Josh. You've got one, and I've got one for the pod today. Why don't you go first? You've been kind of working on this, at least in your head, for a couple weeks now, I know. Well... <sighs> and just kind of getting it together, and and I know you're going to say it's not an original idea. It's not. It's not, definitely because of my search, but what here's what I'll preface this with. Okay. Is it's always fun to come up with a theory on your own that you haven't heard before, and then go get it validated by other people, like-minded people that are thinking about it, maybe obviously faster than you are, but we all come about our, you know, knowledge at the, at our own pace, right? Yeah, there's many paths, many paths. Many and paths. some of us aren't, you know, full finger on the pulse type of, uh, you know, we're kind of like, as it comes. And one of the things that I want to talk about, well, hang on a second. Sure. You said something there that I wanted to ask you on. So when you kind of had the beginning of this idea that you weren't sure if people had been talking about right. yet, you felt better about it once you realized that, oh, yes, people had been talking about this. This wasn't, um, you know, I think I think what you'll end up sharing is that it, it was 
at least brought up about eight months ago or something? Yeah, or? about eight months and ago. And so you felt like, okay, this idea that I had uh, is valid because somebody else had, had already thought of it before. And so what I'm coming, what I, what I'm thinking of on my own is actually something that other people are, are already putting together as well. And you felt validated by that. There's a degree of that part of you wants to be the guy that finds it, yes. finds the nugget and gets it. And because that's, that's exactly when yeah. we get to me and, and right. my idea, that's why I was hoping like, Ooh, I might be on to something here. I haven't ever heard anybody talk about this. Well, that's before. how I felt. And, but the consolation prize is okay, good. At least, it at least holds enough water to to intrigue other people who are more in tune, faster, have in this case read the book before I did, you know, whatever. Yeah. So anyway, the topic we're talking about is the Mandalorian, which I can't wait for. Which neither of us can wait for. Like I am more, ex- I'm almost as excited for the Mandalorian as I am for Episode Nine. I'm almost as excited for the Mandalorian as I am, or I'm more excited for the for the. The Fallen Order, the new Jedi game, because I'll buy that and play that, and you guys won't hear from me till I beat it. Um, which is another game? fun fact. What was the fun fact? I had? the fun fact is, is I looked at the, I finally looked at the poster, which had the main character from Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order, mm-hmm. and I was like, I know that guy, I know that actor. Which you know, games are just getting better and better with their graphics. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's a dude from Shameless, and I had to go look him up, and I was like, all ready to show Andy, like. This guy is so cl- and then you pull up his name and his name's Cameron Monaghan and literally right next to his profile picture is the trailer <laughs> for Jedi Fallen Order. It's like, uh, it might have been more obvious than I thought. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely him. So good on good on EA or whoever made that for uh Yeah, and by the way, Saul Guerrero looks just like Forrest Whitaker. Ooh, and it is Forrest Whitaker. And it sounds like him too because <laughs> he's doing the voice for it. So that's that was yeah. that was cool that to game, find that out. Too. I am so stoked for and the one thing I heard and, and love is that no pay to play, no upgrades via money, buy that thing, play that thing, it's yours, like video games used to be, instead yeah. of like the video games as they are now, like, hey, pay 60 bucks, and if you really want to play, it's going to be about 200 more, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're good because you buy things, not because you're actually uh, good. So, that's a whole nother pod topic. That's a whole nother pod topic. All right, let's bring it back to The Mandalorian. So I originally got this when The Mandalorian first came out, especially with the very few images we had, which was of a, quote-unquote, gunslinger, literally, you know. In a nice, shiny. In a nice, shiny, but in Mandalorian armor, yeah, nonetheless. Well, I had read, read the Aftermath series. And if you haven't read the Aftermath series, it's a great series. It's the in-between after the Battle of Endor, kind of the fall of the Empire, transitioning into the climax being the Battle of Jakku. So it takes you kind of to where a point where like you recognize when Rey's going into that Star Destroyer, well, that happened in this series. Like That's why the Star Destroyer is crash-landed on Jakku, because of this huge battle. And then there's characters in between, et cetera, et cetera. Wedge, by the way, Wedge plays a major role in that. Love I forgot. Wedge. I forgot to tell you that, which I know you haven't read the series yet. So read I've it. only read one of the three. But Wedge is practically he's a supporting character, but he's pretty main, to be honest with you. He's he's a good character. Little love interest action going on. It's Ooh, pretty good. Oh yeah. A little baby. wedge action, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't know what I mean. I, um I don't, but I'm glad. I'm thinking of things. <laughs> <laughs> so One of the things that they do, which I appreciate from the author, is they do what are called interludes, which actually happened in Dooku's uh, and and also in Apprentice. Like interludes are cool because they give you side stories that don't particularly, you know, they fill in some gaps. They don't even fill in gaps. They're just like I'm getting a little extra story that's kind of paralleling the story I'm in right now. Okay, and so you take a break. You take a break, and you get to think really quick. And I recall these interludes. And one of the interludes, lubes, ludes, was about a uh, kind of a, a, a self-promoted uh, uh, sheriff who was helping out Freetown, real creative name there for a almost a Western type town. <whistles> yeah, and uh, his name was Cobb Vanth. And Cobb Vanth, the first interaction you have with him is him meeting. Uh, a kind of a out of planet guy, kind of a corporate guy who's trying to negotiate with Jawas 
to buy weapons for their new mining company. Now, what you learn, and spoiler alert... So, Jawas, that would that would imply that they're on Tatooine? Tatooine. So, okay. absolutely, they're on Tatooine. So, Jawas... Um, and and this uh, this corporate mining representative is trying to buy weapons because in the vacuum that was left by the death of Jabba, you have all these syndicates trying to trying to come in under yeah. legit biz and take hold. So why is he buying weapons as a, a mining corporation? Yeah. Because he's really he's a shady. criminal act, yeah. or a criminal organization. Right. So Cobb Vanth is a, a on planet dude, born and raised. And he shows up, me interacts with this guy, and says, "Hey, I'll vouch for you." And like I said, spoiler alert: if you want to read it yourself, you could actually get the book and just read the interludes to get the story, or go to Wikipedia and it'll give you all this. But he kind of says, "Yeah, I'll get you in." Basically, gets him in there, and then one of the treasures, quote unquote, which the Jawas won't show you up front, they're gonna show you, sell you the crap. And he basically telling me, like, "Look, here's how you do it: you come, you buy a piece of crap from him, a trinket, then you come back the next time." You buy a little more valuable trinket. Then the third time, a little more valuable. And then after that, you build a trust. They'll let you in the back. And so he gets him into the back. And in the back is Mandalorian armor. Hmm. Pockmarked. Even described as having acid burns or something along those lines. Oh, like it was in the stomach of some creature? Exactly. So Hmm. the implications are there. It's never validated through this was in a Sarlacc pit or et cetera, et cetera. But essentially, Cobb says, I want that. I need that for my job. And the representative's like, my boss is going to love this. And he's like, your boss sucks. And the only reason I brought you back here was to tell you, to tell him that he better watch out because there's a new man in town. Pew, blaster fire, hits him in the wings him because he's an expert gun. Like the full hip draw, bow, shoots the guy. So he's. De- I think the, the narrator, because I listen to audiobooks, any of you out there, I've already said this, <laughs> but the narrator even uses like a John Wayne type accent for this guy. But he takes this Mandalorian armor and then proceeds to do acts to sheriff gunslinger, the town. to sheriff the town and to keep the red syndicate or what's it called? Uh, anyway, he keeps them out of town and he's fighting them off. And it's this little side story at this interlude. Now he teams up. With the Beastmaster from Jabba's Palace. Who no longer has a beast. Who doesn't have a beast. And that was... Now I'm going to mess up this pronunciation. And but I, it's... I can't wait. Malakili. Malakili is the Beastmaster. You don't want to go Malakali? Malakalakaliki? No, it's just uh, Malakili, I believe. Now, here is a fun <laughs> fact for Somebody you. Somebody correct us on Twitter, please. Oh, I'm sure they will. Don't worry about it. it Matt, hit us up, bro. Any, um, any of the mats. <laughs> so here's here's a quick question for you. I'm trying to find it before because I had my notes. Remember I told you I left my notes? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you know the name of the Rancor that Luke killed? Oh, the Rancor had a name? Yeah. I had no. I do not know the answer to that. I'll tell you what. It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to try and say it? I'm trying. To, it's, it's like Praveen. Praveen. Hold on. I'm almost there. Ah, man. I'm telling you what. So anyway, there's a name for the Rancor. So he finds and meets up with this Beastmaster who is distraught. Remember how distraught oh, yeah. he was after he, Luke He looked him? like uh, Norm from Cheers, but he was sad. Oh, he was so distraught. And as a matter of fact, I think he saves him from some of these syndicate guys. And, and his line is like, just kill me. I've lost everything <laughs> after he lost his <laughs> Rancor. So... I'll, long story short, I, you can go and, and read it yourself or not, but the parallels, which, like I said, were described eight months ago or so um, by, uh, if you go to Screen Rant, um, and it's another Star Wars theory, it was pretty, it was cl- it latched onto quickly by somebody who had obviously read the book. And that's what happened to me. Like, I had a fully original idea in my mind. Right. But it had obviously been explored that, by somebody else. That came from reading or listening to the audiobooks. Yep. And you thought, you know what? I wonder, you know, that would make sense for the Mandalorian to be like this. And you know what? If it is, I'm all in on that idea. I think that's that would be a great... Well, the uh, timeline fits because they said that it's going to be right after, you know, the fall of the Empire or the, the destruction of the second Death Star. 
and a gunslinger and and all of this Tatooine provides a perfect atmosphere for that. He's yeah. defeat he's defending Freetown. He's even spoiler alert, he's even harboring with the use of the Beastmaster, Malik Malalikaliki, Jabba's son. So he's got this little hutlet, which is a hilarious term. A hutlet. And well, we've seen we've seen little baby huts on the Clone Wars. Sure we have. So. Yeah, we have, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah. he's got a little hutlet he's taken care of. And so I think it's safe to say that our Mandalorian is Cobb Vanth. Okay. Now you you put it on wax, so it's uh But I'm not the first one to say that. Okay. So if you've heard this before, thank you and roll your eyes. <laughs> All right. Like I said, I, I would ah, be I Patisa. Patisa. Finally found it. The Rancor Patisa. Patisa. I wonder if like they had a chummy relationship. Well, of course he was crying. Can you imagine? A, hey, Raising have you ever had a, a nice, rancor? solid Rancor hug? I have not. Right. So you don't know. Mm-hmm. So and now go. we'll never know. You'll never know. Patisa's dead. <laughs> Long live Patisa. Yeah. All right, Josh. Well, I I like uh, I like the ideas here, and and uh, and I'm I'm happy for you that uh, you felt validated by. Um, <laughs> that sounds a little knowing that <laughs> that your idea was good enough for someone else to have too. Sure, that's I mean, formulated that, on my own. Six months later, because I've had this going on in my brain for like two. Okay. Well, Whenever the Mandalorian was first announced. Well, I the other day I was um, I was folding some laundry, <laughs> and Keep I was exciting, I was watching the Last Jedi, um, just because it, you know it was it was on Netflix, so I you know I just need something to kill time while I'm doing my chores, and uh, I noticed something that I hadn't I hadn't seen I hadn't noticed before. I've seen the Last Jedi probably five or six times. Um, and I, and I don't recall seeing it before. And up until that point, I had never heard anybody talk about it. So it was another scenario like you just had. Um, and it was a scene where Yoda appears to Luke as a force ghost, right? And I think overall, a lot of people like that interaction between Yoda, I mean, Frank Oz as the puppet and doing the voice. Well, it was classic the, Yoda. It was like pre I'm Yoda, the Jedi Yoda. It was all super sarcastic and funny. It was yeah. Good. There was a little comic relief. And, and as is the case in the original trilogy, we kind of get an idea of what Jedis are and what they can do, what their kind of abilities are. And then the prequel trilogy, we get a, an, uh, another kind of wave of Jedi abilities. There's there's some more things we find out that Jedi can do. And then in the sequels, we've even found out some more things that Jedi and Sith can do as well. You know, and I, what comes to mind immediately is like Kylo holds the bolt that... Uh, right. That uh, Oscar Isaac shoots at him. Poe. Poe, thank you. And uh, hold, freezes him, like force freezes... Poe and the bolt that gets shot at him. And like, we hadn't seen that before, but you know, as these movies come out, we learn about new things that Jedi and or Sith can do, which is cool. You know, it's like, what are they going to do next? And, um, it seemed to me that everybody thought it was kind of a big deal that Yoda was able to call down lightning as a force ghost that end up lighting the tree on fire, and you know you've seen the scene. I got to be honest; it didn't affect me at all. Which, like, yeah. you didn't find that like, oh, like, no, I never went. Oh, I was just like, oh shit, they're burning. Oh shoot, they're burning the 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 books. So like, you were more consumed at like this ancient tree, uh, gen- right? You know, so with the books in it was on fire right. rather than how it got on right. fire. Okay, right. okay, that's that's fair, um, because that was a poignant moment. Um, but for me, it was like. Oh, as a force ghost, he has the the ability to manipulate lightning. Now, Sith use lightning, right? right. That was a that was a Sith trait to use lightning as a, in, as a destructive way, and we've seen Yoda able to fend it off when he was going with against his own hand with his yeah. own hand when he yeah. was going against du, uh, Dooku. 
Um, and we've also seen uh, Jedi with their lightsabers be able to. We saw Obi Wan do that it, as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, which side note, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever thought this, Josh, but in Attack of the Clones, when Dooku and Yoda are facing off, and and they're Dooku's throwing force things at him and the lightning, and he ab- kind of absorbs it and kind of shoots it off. Why didn't Yoda, like when he threw when Dooku threw the rocks at him through the force or shot the lightning at him, why didn't he just deflect it onto Dooku's ship? Now he can't get away. Now, I mean, disable the ship. I mean, come on. Have I, you? When's the last time you were in a lightsaber lightning battle? Are you thinking on your feet? We've already just we've already established that Yoda <laughs> doesn't always make the right decisions. Yes. Okay. All right. I guess we'll put that under that list. Um, I'm kidding. That's like my mantra now. It's like Yoda's dumb, which is will get me hanged. Yoda's not. Which I don't perfect. believe. Perfect. There's you can. He's in. He's he's not infallible. No. Anyway, uh, but but it's right after he calls down the lightning, which was a new thing. Nobody had seen a Jedi. Use lightning, let, let alone, alone a force ghost. A force ghost, right? So that was that was a talking point. I remember that. But what he does afterwards, he's like he gets in Luke's face a little bit, and you know says, "Oh, you know Skywalker." All, again, you know, always concerned with other things and not present, the basically. Future, yeah. And and when he says that to him, he takes his cane and he whacks him on the forehead with it. Again, like it happens in a moment, and it was just a. It was a Yoda thing to do. It was a little bit comic even catch it. Yeah, it would just it happened in a moment, but Force Ghost Yoda takes his Force Ghost cane and whacks Luke on the head so that a a ghost interacts physically with a And Luke does flinch. It, it hits him. It makes it a noise. It, they do the old coconut knock. Yeah, like you know, it was a ghost interacted in the physicalness with a human. He didn't look very ghosty most of the time anyway, though, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, so so I thought, man, this is significant. And I even threw it out to a few people on Twitter, like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, I'm just making this realization. Tell me somebody else has already talked about this. This is this is not a new idea or thing. Um, and, you know, and I, I kind of got jazzed up a little bit. I thought I was maybe onto something here a little... Um, and you know, I sent it out to four people, two, two of them responded back to me and they're like, like, Oh yeah, maybe one was kind of, you know, a little like, oh, yeah, like, but it didn't, wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't and, profound. Yeah. And the other one was like, um, actually they were both that way. <laughs> they were both that way. And so it was like, they, they threw, uh, they theories threw some, theories they theories. threw some water on my fire. So, You're uh, on your tree fire. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, so so then I I start doing my own research. I look up on Wikipedia because that's where I go for uh, questions. Um, so has this ever happened before? Has a force ghost ever had a tangible effect on natural phenomena like you know Yoda with the lightning, or have they ever interacted physically? You know because and so I'm looking up on Wikipedia. Um, and there was a there was an example of a force ghost named Aiden Bach, uh, who was killed by Darth Vader um, after Order sixty six. This happened a little later, um, where he interacted with a person called Tosh Aranda, where the force ghost, in order to save them, force pushed the person through a doorway. And like the hatch shut before the mm. something in the room exploded mm-hmm. or something like that. So a force ghost pu- force pushed a human through a doorway to save him. Okay, so this was this was the only example I could find in canon or legend. And this is legend. This is not new canon. Now this was this happened in like this was from a book in 1997 or something right. like that. Um, it uh, was called uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Fear. And so um, this happened. So in canon, this there's a precedent that has been set um, where a ghost interacted physically with a living being. Okay, that's old canon, though. This isn't new canon. This is what is called legend now. Um, 
so the implication, so, okay, so it happened. So what are the implications of this? So I was thinking, well, all right, who's the only force ghost that we have left now? Because force ghosts attach themselves to people through the force. They have to be force users and they have to have a connection to them, right? So Qui-Gon visited Yoda and he visited Luke and other stories. Right. Um, Yoda appeared to Luke. Obi-Wan appeared to Luke. So now Luke is gone and has become one with the Force, which means he can show up as a Force ghost again. So who would he show up to? Well, the obvious answer is Ray, right? If he's going to show up as a Force ghost, it's going to be with Ray because he has a connection to her. He also has a connection to Ben as well. Right. But, you know, we can talk about that. So as a Force ghost, you know, Force ghosts are are in a way a lot like holocrons. They give guidance and wisdom. And, uh, you know, some of them sit down on the log like Obi-Wan sure. does. It Grab appears appears like he has physicalness as a spirit of, you know, basically what's called energy. You know, they're just energy, basically. Um, and or so, maxed out quads, man. He could just <laughs> squat it up. Yeah, so Obi-Wan sits down on the log when he's talking to Luke uh, in uh, Empire Strikes Back. Sometimes they can hover like a angel, you know, or, you know, what, what sure. you might think of some spiritual being, but they can appear to have, they can appear to be affected by things like gravity or they can just appear. So yeah, they can walk, they yeah. can sit. So, uh, like Qui-Gon was just a voice. He was never actually, uh, 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 formed as a being. He was just a voice to Yoda. And I think he was just a voice to Obi-Wan as well. Although that isn't a hundred percent known. I don't think. Anyway, all that to say is like, well, okay, if, if Yoda could do that, if he could interact physically with Luke, Luke as a Force ghost, how could how could that manifest in Episode Nine? Like, is he gonna is he gonna force push Ray out of the way for something, or is he gonna is he gonna do something where he interacts with a with it would either have to be Ray or Ben um, because that's who uses the Force and that's who he has connection with, unless they do something weird with Leia, which I I, I don't. I don't think I don't know. so. I don't think so either. Anyway, what does that mean? What are the implications? Is it something? Is it nothing? Is the fact that Luke whacked or got his forehead whacked by Yoda's cane as a Force ghost, is that something? Is it something that we might see again show up in Episode Nine, or is it just something that they did for just a bit of comedic relief? And it's it, an it's an afterthought. I think that was my initial reaction when you told me this was like ah, maybe they didn't think it through, but then again. I think they think things, you know, things through. I think that you're probably stumbling on a, a precedent. So there, you you could go back and be like, "Hey, remember when Yoda thumped Luke in the head?" So perhaps that'll allow for fo- Force Ghosts to interact in a different way in the next episode, or at least let Luke. And maybe it's not profound. Maybe he doesn't have he doesn't force push somebody through you know, or save anybody. Maybe it's just that he manipulates. Now, uh, this was the area of contention, right? Because remember, he leaves the dice and then they disappear or, you know, whatever. But doesn't he touch Leia's face? You know, he does something. Right. He drops, he drops, yeah, he kisses so, her on the forehead. Right. And he drops the the golden dice in right. her hand. And it's at, it's like at that point, that's when Leia knows that, what's actually happening. Right. Luke isn't actually there because, you know, it, though it appears that he touches the hand, her hand, like she would know that there's nothing actually there. It's just a a projection, which kind of makes you wonder like, okay, well if as a force ghost, he can interact with people. Why couldn't he interact as Luke Skywalker with a force projection? You know, uh, we could be far down the trail here, <laughs> and they might be like, "All right, how do we how do we pull these strings together?" So that that's yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And I would you know I think it yeah. It would just be like Ryan Johnson, just throw that little thing in there as a side note, and then all of a sudden it has a huge implication in episode nine. Right. You know, or it absolutely it means nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. I am I am prepared for either on this. It I just but it is a good like you said like I said it's a precedent. It's a complete precedent. Meaning. If they were to decide that a Force Ghost could interact in some way, like Luke, who would be our prime Force Ghost, or Palpatine, who I don't know if Sith get Force Ghosts or not, because 
Vader came back as one, but was more he a Sith on or? him in just a uh, second, yeah, yeah. Josh. So anyway, what I want to ask you, Josh, is it something or nothing? I think it's something to consider. I don't know that it's actually going to be anything. So I've gone through the full gamut. I thought it was something at first. Right. And now I think it's nothing. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's the easy way to be like, hey, remember when I thought it was something? I was right then. Yeah. And well, now then I remember when I said it was nothing? I'm still right. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I'm right either way when I say that. Is that what you're saying? I'm being wishy washy. Yeah. Uh, Ride that fence, bro. Well, I just I just went through the the emotional roller coaster of thinking I had a unique thought and then coming to the realization hey, me too, that man. it's probably not anything. Somebody thought of it in so, October. Uh, so listeners, something or nothing. Okay, answer it's answer what you. you think. All right. Now in this search through Wikipedia and Force Ghosts, um, it it had a list of um, known Force Ghosts in the Star Wars universe. Right. Okay. So we know the ones from the movies. But what about in books and other things in Legends uh, or current canon? Um, and there were some Sith, too. There was a list of Jedi, which was a lot bigger than the list of Sith. But there was a list of Sith, and one of the, one of the characters was Palpatine. Hmm. The said had shown up as a Force ghost, or a Sith ghost, I guess you would call it. Now, this is in Legend. Legend. Not okay. Canon. Yeah. This is in Legend. But uh, the thing that was, it said Darth Sidious, and then in parentheses it said final body destroyed in 11 ABY, after the Battle after of Yavin. After the Battle of Yavin. Yeah. So the um, Battle of Endor was for ABY. Right. So for seven years after the Battle of Endor, Darth Sidious existed in some form or another, either through a force ghost or through uh, cloning, he would he would clone. He had clones of himself that he would impart his spirit in, yep. and then he would basically Star regenerate. Wars, the extended universe loved keeping people alive. Oh, they loved keeping it. people around. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, one of the books I read had a you know a Jedi that was fallen and taken over by a spirit. You know, that that happens quite a bit in the extended universe, no longer canon. So you're, so yeah. So as I'm reading this, I'm like, okay, that's all right. This is according to legend. This isn't anything in new canon. Uh, But we just saw, I mean, in my lookup of Yoda, you know, interacting as a ghost tangibly, you know, the only other example I could find was this was in legend. Right. That, now that Yoda has done it, is now canon. So something that happened in old canon has now happened in new canon, making right. the precedent cross over. Right. So why couldn't this happen in episode nine? And I know that it's been already said before, like like Palpatine is is a, a bit of a horcrux, where he's um, his spirit lies within... Sith relics, you know, and that's what the Knights of Ren are doing. They're collecting Sith relics because, you know, Snoke wanted them and, and there, there was some power within them or at least some Sith wisdom that could be Well, gotten. like Vader's mask. Like I Vader's... Mean, and, and Kylo is not worshipping, but he's definitely into it. idolizing yeah. that mask. Yeah, and, and for more reasons that I think that are just right. his, his grandfather. that's a good callback. And so... Um, so uh, so the fact that, you know, originally I said that the Sidious laugh at the end of the teaser trailer is just a hook. Yeah. It's just a hook. You know, he's going to show up in a vision where there's just Sidious laughing. You know, he's not going to be involved in sure, episode nine like at all. Sure, he's a comedy special or something. Yeah, yeah, he's a laugh track, right. you know. Right. <laughs> and so I'm on record for saying it's nothing. The Sidious laugh is nothing. It is I not. It can't be. Uh, well... That, I, I that was my initial screen. reaction. Yeah, we were I'd doing initial screen. reactions. That was my initial reaction. This is just a, an awesome clickbait, an awesome callback, like in Ray's vision in The Force Awakens. That's what the Knights of Ren were. They were just in a vision. That's it. But now they're coming back. All right. So we make kind of reevaluate things. And of course, we've got months to talk about stuff until the movie comes, or at least the next trailer comes. Um, 
if if he's going to be back, maybe he did clone himself. Maybe they're going to take something from Legend and then reapply it into new canon. And he was my really cool little like. All right, this would be Drop awesome. It. This would be awesome. Kylo is looking for Vader relics, right? And that's why he says Anakin's lightsaber that belongs to me, right? As is inheritance, and as a Sith follower, there's right. like Anakin's lightsaber would be very powerful in the hands of another Sith, right? Right. Um, Horcrux similarities aside, like. Harry Potter. Right. <laughs> uh, what if they're looking, what if Ben slash Kylo is looking for Vader's lightsaber, the red one? Now that's canon. And they find it. And now Ben has Vader's lightsaber. Ray has Anakin's lightsaber and they battle. Mm. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. And by the way, like I said, that's canon. Yes. Vader Saber Alive is canon because in Aftermath, there's another interlude which involves, I would claim to be the predecessors to the Knights of Ren. I think they were called something Vader, some something along those lines. Acolytes? Acolytes of Vader. And there's one interlude where they purchase a saber claimed to be the Dark, the Sith Lord's or Vader's saber. But their statement was, which would add to your Force Ghost argument, when asked by the peddler, you know, of course, there's this interaction that's very intense. You know, someone's going to shoot someone, but they pay the credits and they get the saber. And he says, what are you going to do with it? He's got like a Watto voice. Exactly. Okay. And uh, hey, hey, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> and, little New Yorky. Little New Yorky. <laughs> little, little sassy. <laughs> and they say... We're going to destroy it. And they go, oh, what for? So it can return to its master in death, which is canon. It's canon. That's yeah, because why would, a, why would a, a, a dead Sith want his lightsaber back if not to use it? Whew. Uh, All right. We might be uh, unlocking some things. I don't know. What can we do? What can we do? Legend is not canon anymore, so all those good ideas are thrown out. Why wouldn't they just throw out other good ideas? Why would they bring ideas? a couple of the good ones back? So, they wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> that they, makes I mean, too much sense. Too much sense. Too much sense. So anyway, I think Kylo with Vader's lightsaber against Rey and Anakin's lightsaber, I think that would be a cool little show. Does he just tape on a couple hilts? Just oh, so like he takes his, yeah, like his, a, uh, his, his cross hilt yeah. lightsaber, and then tapes Vader's yeah. upside down. So yeah. now it's on both sides. Yeah. Like looks like an Inquisitor. No, uh, no it's more of a, it's a, it's a Darth Maul callback. He's, he's yeah, yeah, the dual bladed, but yeah. he just like duct tapes it. We we digress, maybe a little bit. Thank you for listening to the Hall of Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much love to uh, to at. Green Arrow. What is that? At Green Arrow? True Green Arrow. True Green Arrow. Uh, thank you for your response. We loved uh, sending those to you, and uh, your reaction was great and fantastic. Even if it was partially in PM and partially on our feed, uh, thank you. And if you want to follow us, go to at Holochronicles on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTubes. And, uh, you know, you'll find us on all the major podcast networks. And thank you for sharing it with a friend. Uh, we get a lot of enjoyment Yeah, like about us. This. Yeah. Interact Follow with us. us. Ask us questions. We're, we're totally game. We'll, we'll respond. Uh, we're not that big. <laughs> we're not too big to reply. <laughs> exactly. We love to reply. Um, and uh, and, and, and special, uh, I just, go ahead. Go ahead while you're doing that. I'll look this up. But uh, I just want, before you say it, I just, I'll call out, uh, Chuck Wendig's Aftermath trilogy. Make sure you read that. It's got good stuff. If you don't read it, just read it for the interludes because I think those are telling connections to what we got going on here. Um, I definitely think there's some there's something there, at least for The Mandalorian. Yeah. If yeah. Anything. I, I'm with you on that. Cobb Vanth. If you have a Star Wars collection that you'd like us to feature on a Saturday, hashtag show me your collection. Um, I've been striking out a little bit lately on on finding people that would be willing to put a couple pictures up of what they got. Um, so if that's you and we haven't featured you yet, uh, DM us um, or comment on the no, U- share what YouTube. You got, man. Yeah, share what you got. Uh, we get we get or we like man. to see what people are into. Take care. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Yup, nub. Yup, nub. Yup, nub. Celebrate the night. Celebrate the night. Anakin just waving. 